top of the page. So now we want to talk about conditional probabilities. Now conditional probabilities also have two events written inside of the parentheses, but in this case the order matters. Order is important. Okay? Um, this sign that we write, it's not a slash, it's a horizontal, uh, it's a vertical straight line and um, the letter that comes or the event that comes after the line is the condition that must be satisfied. For example, if I write probability, open parentheses, then I put the letter M, then the given sign, and then if I put the letter A, this is probability um, of being a male given um, you la um, given the individual given the person likes um, car for appearance. So um, this is the given and that's how you read it. So therefore the letter that comes after the sign is the given uh, or event or the condition that must be satisfied. So how do we compute this? Since um, we are um, looking at given A, we want, we're zooming in on this A column right here. Now we know there are 180 of them in there. So probability of M given A we know there's 180 of them, so we should be dividing by 180. But look, M out of those 100, the males out of those 180, there's 120 of them. So it's 120 males out of 180 people who buy a car because of its appearance. And if you go through that math, you get 0.667. So if we have 180 individuals who buy a car because of its um, appearance and out of those 180, 180, 120 of them are male, the balance which is female would give me the probability of being a female given that you buy a car because of its appearance. And that number would be 0 0.333. And of course these numbers add up to 1 because um, we're dividing the, the um, denominator or the subgroup is con comprised of 180 people and the male and the female are the two subcategories of them. So they add up to 1. Now by the same token we can compute probability of male given that you buy a car, probability that you're a male given that you buy a car because of its performance and that is 130 out of 220. Why? Because now we're zooming in on those people who buy a car because of its performance. And those people are 220 right here. So out of those 220 you can see 130 of them buy a car right there, right, buy a car because of its, um, I'm sorry, that uh, out of the 220 who buy a car because of its performance, uh, 130 of them are male. So 130 divided by 220 is 0 0.591 and probability of uh, female given performance is uh, 90 divided by 220, which is 0 point, uh, which is 0 point, um, 0.409. And of course these add up to 1. Um, but so far we've looked at the given event being the reason for purchase, either appearance or performance. We can also compute conditionals for the other event, 
probability of being given that you're a male, uh, what is the probability that you buy a car because of its appearance? And that would be uh, we have uh, 250 male individuals, and out of those, 120 buy a car because of its appearance. And that would be um, 0 0.48. And you can see that right here. 250 right here are men, but out of those, 120 buy a car because of its appearance. Um, similarly, probability of uh, buying a car because of its performance, given that you're a man, would be the remainder, 130 divided by 250, which of course would be 0 0.52, and those add up to 1. And we also have probability of buying a car because of its appearance, given that you're a female, and that would be 60 over 150, which is 0 0.4. And um, uh, one more probability of buying a car be, uh, because of its performance, given that you're a female. And that would be the complement of this 0.4 that we just computed, which would be 0 0.6. But we can also compute it to be 90 over 150, which is the total number of females in this uh, study. And of course, these two numbers um, add up to 1. These numbers are conditional probabilities, what we just um, discussed. And next. Um, so let me go to here and um, let's talk about um, let's talk about um, this di this um, problem in terms of um, a tree diagram. So if I have um, the two events of gender, and purchase uh, reason for purchase um, described like this, we can start by, in this case, we have all the probabilities of all the events, simple, joint, and marginal. So if I, if I were to start with male and female, um, the probability of male we computed to be 0 0.625, and the probability of female is the complement of it, 0 0.375. So these two should always add up to each other because those are all the uh, possible outcomes of this event gender. Now, um, the second set of probabilities that we diagram right here are uh, conditional probabilities. And the reason why we say they're conditional because um, this right here would be the probability of um, let's say, um, appearance given male, and this would be performance given male. Because the two events, let me start by um, like this. We'll, take, we'll get rid of these, and we'll say now that the two events um, underlying the per reason for purchase are either appearance or performance, appearance or performance. But these two events, notice that they come after the probability, the event of um, the customer being a male. So these two right here are conditional. Given that you're a male, what is the probability that you buy a car because of its appearance or performance? So this is given male, given male. And this is A and P, given female, given female. Now we've computed these probabilities right here already from our table um, that I showed you before. And those are A given M. A given M um, is 0 0.48 and this will have to be 0 0.52. Uh, 
uh, even if I had not computed it, this would have to be 0 0.52. Um, Um, because of the complementary uh, nature of them. And over here, um, A given F is 0 0.4, and so this will have to be 0 0.6. So, um, the joint, so here we have simple, here we have conditional, and the rule is simple times conditional gives us joint. So 0.625 times 0.48 gives me the probability of A and M. Probability of A intersect M, which is 0 0.3. This one is probability of uh, A or P and M. Um, the individual is a man and buys a car because of its um, performance. So P and M was 0 0.325. And if you were to uh, multiply 0 0.625 times 0 0.52, you're going to get 0 0.325. Oops. Um, similarly, over here, we have probability of A and F and probability of um, P and F. And um, those numbers are, if you multiply 0 0.375 times 0 0.4, you're going to get um, A and F is 0 0.15, and P and F is 0 0.25. 225. Now obviously I told you all of those should add up to 1. Each of these numbers on these branches should add up to 1 and these two numbers on these branches should add up to 1. <coughs> so um, at this point um, uh, coming back up here, let's um, take this uh, tree diagram and let's flip it, meaning now we're going to start our um, first set of events to be reason, and um, we want our second set of events to be gender. Now reason, we can keep it to be appearance and performance, and gender can be man, female, male and female, male and female. But of course we know the second set of branches are conditionals. These two are conditional given A, and these two are conditional given P. So, and of course we know the end product of them. These are simple, these are conditional, multiply them, and we get joint. So even if I did not have um, all the information that I've already solved for, if I have this table down below on your screen, which I did first, I can work it backwards and generate all the information in a top table. The way I would do that is I know probability of A and M is 0 0.3 and A and M would be over here, A and M. So this is 0 0.3. This next one is P and M over here, 0.325, and P and M would be over here and that's 0 0.15. Now notice the order has flip-flopped because the order of the tree has, flip, has flip-flopped. So we had 0 .3, 0 0.3 up and then the third entry Wait a second. P and M is 0.325. Sorry, this should be 0 0.325. 0 0.325. Um, now notice we had 0 0.3, 0 0.325. Now we have 0 0.3. Skip one and then 0 0.325, and that's because of the flipping of the tree. And now this one is probability of A and F because we have 
individuals who buy a car because of its appearance and they buy a car because of um, and they are female and so this joint probability would be a intersect f and that number is right here 0 0.15 and the last one will have to be the 0 0.225 which is the probability of p and f now once you have the end values or the joint probabilities we know this these two which are at the end of this branch right here will add up to that value so 0.3 plus 0.15 is 0 0.45 which is um, what we had to begin with if you go down in your notes you will see that the probability of appearance was 0 0.45 and then the hmm, let me change colors here um, if I can um, and I'll just highlight and these ones these two will have to add up to this one so uh, the summation of those two will be um, 0 0.55 and I'll highlight that okay so now that we have um, our simple or marginal probabilities at these first branches and now that we have our joint probabilities remember the rule simple multiplied by conditional equals joint so I can compute this probability right here probability of M given A by taking its joint probability 0 0.3 divided by 0 0.45 to get um, 0 0.667 and similarly I can compute this one this is um, probability of F given A which is uh, probability of A and F divided by probability of A which is um, 0 0.15 divided by 0 0.45 which is equal to um, 0 0.33 and similarly you can compute this one right here to be um, 0 0.325 divided by 0 0.55 and this other one to be 0 0.225 divided by 0 0.55 and um, later on when you see another video called um, tree flipping um, I, I have three or four of them uh, this schematic of tree branching essentially um, is the basis of that analysis I hope you found this helpful I know this has been a long one but I hope you've benefited from it thank you